It just got a lot easier to add generative AI capabilities to your Power Platform solutions thanks to the new Azure OpenAI AI Builder model. So stick around and I'll show you how we can add this to our Power Apps and Power Automate solutions to unlock all kinds of new possibilities with the power of generative AI. So before we dive into some of this AI builder functionality here, let's talk about what Azure OpenAI is. Azure OpenAI gives us the ability to take advantage of these large scale generative AI large language models and use those inside of our applications. So with the power of GPT-4, we can unlock all kinds of use cases with these large language models, like being able to author and write new content, generate code, do reasoning over data, and all kinds of things. So you might be thinking we probably have to create some kind of custom connector to be able to take advantage of these capabilities inside of our Power Platform solutions. While that is one way to do it, we actually have this baked into AI Builder now with a pre-built model. Now I don't wanna go into the weeds of licensing and all that, but AI Builder is an additional license for the Power Platform. So I'll provide a link in the video description on some documentation about how that works. And then the last caveat before I go into the demo here is this is currently in a private preview. So you will need to sign up for that. I'll include some details in the video description on some documentation for this, which includes a link on how to sign up for the private preview. But hopefully sooner than later, we'll see this being rolled out more. So with all that out of the way, let's take a look at how this works. So I'm actually gonna start here inside of Power Automate and we'll go over to our AI Builder tab on the left-hand side and select Explore. And if you have a Power Platform dev environment, you can actually do a free trial of AI Builder to test out some of these functionalities once this does start rolling out. So this is where we can see all of the pre-built models that we have for AI Builder. Obviously, Azure OpenAI Service is just one of them. We have a ton of different things that we can do with this, everything from forms recognition, invoice processing, business card readers, and all that. But the one we're concerned about is this new preview functionality here, Azure OpenAI Service to create text, answer questions, summarize documents, and more with GPT. So if we click that, we see we're taken to the screen where we get some templates to give us some ideas of what we can do with this powerful generative AI functionality. So if we click the drop down here, we can see everything from summarizing text, responding to a complaint, even creating blog posts based off of a topic that you put in, extracting specific information from text, and even acting as a fact checking Q&A bot. So tons of different things we can do. Now, if we want to kind of test out some of this functionality, we can select any one of these templates, like say the summarized text option here. And how it works is we need to give Azure OpenAI a prompt. We're also known as instructions is what it's referred to here in AI Builder. So when we click on one of these templates, what it's doing is actually pre-populating and giving us a prompt or instructions that we pass in into the Azure OpenAI service to tell it what we want it to do. So for the instructions, we're telling GPT here that we wanted to summarize text in less than two paragraphs without adding new information. And then it gives us some inputs here. So we have the start of the text and we have the end of the text. And it tells us to put in the text that we want to summarize in between those two blocks. So that's giving the generative AI service everything it needs to be able to go respond and give us the next nth result based on our prompt. So maybe I want to be able to summarize this block of text here that explains what desktop flows are. So we'll copy that. We'll go back over here into our AI Builder template and we'll paste in our text. Now we can click that test out button and it will generate a response for us going and calling the model inside of Azure OpenAI. And we can see based off of all of that text that I entered, it followed our instructions and gave us a one paragraph response that summarized all of that text. So you can just imagine how many different use cases there are for this summarized text functionality alone inside of your different workflows. Like, wouldn't it be cool if every time you get a lengthy email in your inbox, you can just have a workflow automatically kick off, summarize that for you and shoot you a message. Another one I like is the fact checking Q&A bot. So this is really helpful as well. So you can give it a prompt like, I'm a highly intelligent question answering bot. If you ask me a question that is rooted in truth, I will give you the answer. If you ask me a question that is trickery or nonsense or has no clear answer, I will respond with unknown. So at this one, we can add in a question here like, is the Mandela effect real? We'll test this out and see what it says. And it looks like it replied here with the response that that is not real. So we can keep testing it out. Like maybe, let's see, let's push the limits here. Is Bigfoot real? 
Ah, so not enough evidence on Bigfoot. He still may exist there. <laughs> so these templates aren't all that you can do. Anything that you could imagine practically, you could put in as instructions or prompts into this and it can return the information for you. This is just meant to give you some ideas of what you can do. Uh, one of the things that I like as well is right from this model, we can click use in a flow and that will take you to a template that already has this connector for the Azure OpenAI AI Builder model baked into it. So this particular template is connecting to Dataverse and it has some approvals going on. Uh, let's just click continue and I'll show you what this template's doing. So we can tweak this however we need to. This example here is a manually triggered flow. So we'd be able to execute it manually, pass in some information, and then have it run the Azure OpenAI service. But one of the things that I wanted to show you about the template and what it's doing kind of goes back to the whole concept of responsible AI. So this template is calling the AI Builder Azure OpenAI service model. But below you'll notice that it doesn't just stop there. It also includes an approval process. So one of the things with responsible AI is when you're using generative AI capabilities like this, not only do you want to disclose that what the user is seeing is generated by AI, but also you ideally want to run the response by a real human before sending it off. Because frankly, it can be inaccurate or even biased. So you really wanna make sure that you spot check that with a real human to look for any inaccuracies or biases and stuff like that. So that's why we have this approval process as part of the template. So before sending the response on and replying, you're going to send it off to someone. Hey, here's the response, here was the request. This is the response that we got. Can you do a check, make sure it's accurate. So we have that simple approval. And if it is accurate, it will return the response back to the user. So let's test what else we can do beyond those kind of template prompts that we saw. So this is feeding some information about asking it to summarize text. But again, that's not all that it can do. We can put in any prompt that we want here in the instructions and have it do really whatever we want. And it has built-in testing for the instructions we put in. So I can select this Create Instructions button and that'll pop open a panel here where I can change or modify my instructions. So I'm gonna remove this whole summary thing and I'm really into music, so maybe I actually wanna build a workflow to help me write song lyrics. So I'm gonna put in a prompt of, you are a master songwriting bot. Write a song based off of the topic below. I'll say it should be no more than three and a half minutes. And include a catchy hook. And then we'll say write it in a pop or rock format. So we'll see if it can handle this. We're testing this out on the fly here. Now I'll put in my input and we'll give it a test before we apply it to our workflow. So let's have it write a song about Power Automate. All right, moment of truth, we'll test out. Okay, that was pretty dang fast <laughs> to write a whole song here. So we see we have a verse and a chorus. I'm feeling so frustrated. I'm stuck in a rut. My work's piling up. I'm feeling so stuck. I'm searching for a way to make it all go away. That's when I heard about Power Automate. <laughs> I like it. Pretty catchy chorus here. Power Automate, it's the way to go. It'll make your life easier. You'll be in the flow. It'll help you get your work done. It's the way to go. Power Automate, it's the way to go. So nice little song here that I was able to generate for us. So now I have my songwriting helper. I'll never get stuck and have writer's block again. So if this all looks good to me, I just tested it out. I can click use instructions and flow. So now the last piece that I have to do here, now that I have these instructions and I've tested them out, is to pass the input that I have when I run the flow manually into this call of the Azure OpenAI service and AI builder. So first I'm gonna change this input that we have here from input to topic so the user knows uh, what to put in here and I'll change this prompt text to please enter your song topic. And then we just need to do a simple mapping here. So instead of your text here between the start and end text, we're gonna to go to our dynamic content and we'll select the topic here from our trigger. So now that we'll dynamically pass that in when we run this flow. So you might notice I did go ahead and remove the whole approval stuff, even though I just told you all that you should be doing that, but that is in the interest of time for the demo and it's just me using this, but definitely still include that approval process if you're using this for real. 
All right, so let's test this guy out. So we're gonna go to save, and now we'll go back to my flows and run it just like we would normally. So I'm gonna click the run button, and now we'll pass in our song topic. So um, what's the other thing I love? I love music and I love coffee. So let's have it write a song about coffee. And we'll click run flow. And this should send me an email with my song based off my topic. So it looks like it's running right now. And if I go to my email, I did notice a new message. And there we go. We have my song about coffee. I'm sipping on my coffee. It's the only thing that gets me through the day. I'm trying to stay focused, but my mind keeps drifting away. I'm trying to stay productive, but I'm feeling so drained. I'm trying to stay awake, but I'm feeling so restrained. Coffee, coffee, it's the only thing that keeps me going. Coffee, coffee, it's the only thing that keeps me flowing. Coffee, coffee, it's the only thing that keeps me moving. Coffee, coffee, it's the only thing that keeps me grooving. That is one catchy song about coffee. I'm gonna have to steal that and make it a real song. Okay, so there's one fun use case, an example of how we can use this in Power Automate. Of course, there's so many different real business use cases for how you can use this. Anything that you can do with GPT, you can have this automated in your business process. So like when a new document is added to SharePoint, have it automatically summarize that information or, or have it automatically respond to reviews or whatever you can imagine, you can make that happen with this integration. Well, now we showed how to use it in Power Automate. We can also use this inside of Power App. So let's quickly take a look at that as well. So I've started working on a blog scheduling app. So I wanna be able to put in topics write some blog posts and schedule those out to be posted on my blog. And this is a great use case for the new AI Builder model. So to use this, you'll add it in just like any data source. So you'll go over into your data tab, select add data, and then expand out the AI models tab that we see here. And the only reason you don't see it here is because I've already added it into my app, but you'll see an option for the Azure OpenAI model. So you'll select that. And now that'll be added here. It's called create text with GPT using Azure OpenAI service. And now we can use all of that capability inside of our Power App too. So to keep it simple, I've just added in a text box where I can pass in a blog topic. I created a button here where I can call the AI model and then a label where I can put in the text that's generated. So to test this out on my generate button, I'll go to my on select. And here's what I'm gonna do to be able to return information. So first I wanna be able to set the output of what we get from the AI model here into a variable so that I can show that on my app. So that's why I have this set var blog output. I'm just gonna store what we get there inside of that variable. But then this is where I'm gonna call the model itself. So I'm going to type in create text with GPT and do a dot predict. So that will go call out into the Azure Open AI model and AI builder. And then we can simply pass in our prompt. So these are the instructions that we need to tell it what we want to do. So for this prompt, I'm just going to say, you're a blog author, write me a blog about, and I'm going to dynamically pass in some content for my Power App. So I'm gonna pull in that text input.text, and then I'm gonna say, and write it at a 10th grade rating level. The blog should be no more than a five minute read. So it's going to write a blog that takes no more than five minutes to read, at about a 10th grade reading level. So again, you can get as specific and detailed as you want. And really the more detailed, the better for these prompts. And then for my label below, I'm simply setting that text value to my var blog output so we can see what it produces for us. So let's give this a test. So we talked a lot about music, so maybe I wanna do a blog about songwriting. So I'm gonna put that in as my topic and click generate. And I'm not speeding up the video. I wanna do this in real time so you can see how fast it's able to actually come back with a response. So just that quickly, we have a new blog post here with all kinds of information about songwriting. So everything I've showed right now is just the tip of the iceberg with what you can do with this new functionality. And it couldn't be any easier really with this new AI builder model. We just plug and play into our apps and flows and the world is our oyster as far as what we can do with this Azure OpenAI generative AI capability. I would love to hear what you think about this new functionality. And if you have any specific use cases or ideas for how this could be used in your workflow processes or your applications, drop a note in the comments and let me know. I would love to do some more follow-up videos on some more specific scenarios on how we can use this to unlock even more functionality. All right, well, that's all that I have for you today. I'll include a link in the video description for some documentation on where to go to read more about this and sign up for private previews and all of that. Thank you so much for watching. And if you found this video helpful, please do me a favor and click that subscribe button to be alerted of future videos that I have for you all. I'll see you next time. Hey, before you leave, check out some of these other videos I have on AI with Power Platform.